Hello friends, I'd like to take you on a journey. A journey back in time. The year 2020. Oh, wait, hold on for a second. It is peak pandemic. Everyone is in quarantine. They are stuck in the house. And what are people doing? They are getting their craft on. Some people are sewing. Some people are making bread for the first time. Other people making babies. Just kidding. But not just kidding. There have been a lot of babies. Anyway, everyone is stuck at home. And what is your girl doing? She's working. Because she is an essential worker. But even though I was working, I still came home and couldn't really go anywhere, which meant I would come home and binge YouTube. <laughs> and who did I start binging? Makara Tours was pretty much who I was binging at that point. And I had had a dress in mind for about four years that I had wanted to make. And I started watching her and I was like, you wanna know what? We're gonna do it. We're gonna make the dress. This will be my quarantine project. So that is what happened, 2020. And this is me coming back to all that footage and showing you how I made that dress. So this was the initial design for the dress. I came up with the concept when I was in special effects school when we were painting layers of latex into molds to make masks. And I thought, hmm, there are latex outfits. I wonder if I could paint layers of latex to make an article of clothing and intentionally used the brush strokes as an element of the piece and decided to go with Starry Night. So the corset top was going to be layers of painted latex, in theory, and then for the skirt I wanted to do layers of tulle using the colors found in Starry Night, so mainly yellow and blue. So this was my jumping off point. The only thing that I was not super keen on on the sketch was when I had drawn out the layers of orange and yellow tulle with the blue layered over it, in the drawing, those layers kind of ended up looking green, and I was nervous that would happen in real life. So I kind of took pause with that part of the dress, but I liked my idea for the corset, so I decided I was gonna move forward with that. So the corset ended up not being straightforward at all. My initial thought of painting the layers of latex, I thought would go swimmingly, but it did not. In fact, it went so poorly that I don't even have video footage of it. I had originally wanted to use a mannequin, but didn't have one, so I was like, I'll just do it on myself. So I wrapped myself in saran wrap, and then duct taped around that, and then I cut that off my body and tried to paint the latex on that, and figured I'd just peel it off afterwards. Okay, so here was the problem with that theory. This is a piece from the duct tape corset I had made, and you'll see why I only have a piece in a second. But because the duct tape did not layer down super flat, the uh, latex didn't really layer down flat either, and it just became duct tape with latex on it, and it just didn't work. There was no way I was going to be able to cover all these holes nicely, so we had to scrap this idea. So instead, I cut up the duct tape and saran wrap base into pattern pieces, and then used those pattern pieces to cut a corset out of EVA foam. And while it was nice and held its structure, I felt like it was too structured. The whole initial concept is that I had wanted this corset to look like it was painted, to look like it was oil painting. And I felt like because this corset that was made out of foam was so structured, I was going away from that initial design. So I had to stop again and really try to brainstorm what I can do. Yeah, long story short, I decided to go with paper mache. And I had a duh moment of, oh my god, paper mache, so basic and so brilliant, and I think it would work perfect for this project, and it did. I made sure I left the back open so I could get out, and because I knew I was going to corset it anyway, it didn't have to come all the way wrapped around in the back. So once that was dry, peeled it off, and we had our base for the corset. And then on top of that, I just put layers of Mod Podge, Mod Podge, Mod Podge, I can never say it. I put layers of that to kind of give me more of that brush stroke. It didn't work out as well as I had wanted. And I do think overall, the corset top is not quite as like painterly and three-dimensional as I wanted, 
but it was much more in the direction than my previous attempts. So once I had my corset base, before I decided to actually start painting on the corset, I went into Photoshop and laid out the Starry Night painting onto a corset shape so I had an idea of exactly where I wanted the main elements of Starry Night to appear on the corset. And once I had a good idea of how I wanted it to look, I began my work on the actual corset. So I first just laid it out in marker and then I put down base colors for painting. And then I went in and tediously painted hand by hand every brushstroke. And I did that kind of on the side while I started to also focus on the rest of the dress. So like I said, initially I had envisioned the tulle ball gown puffy skirt and I had wanted in my mind layers of yellow and orange tulle with blue layered over it. But because it had come out like such this muddy color in the sketch, I was nervous about that. So I started to think of other things I could do for the bottom of the dress. And I don't know what caused it. I think it was just while I was painting on the corset and doing the millions and millions of tiny little lines, um, I had this thought that wouldn't it be cool if I could somehow make the bottom of the dress mimic brush stroke? So I had this vision of layers of strips of fabric that were all in the colors of Starry Night and all laid out to make a long flowing skirt. That was the new vision I came up with and I just figured I'd cut strips of fabric and lay them all out. And I was torn between these two visions and I didn't know exactly what I wanted because I had, when I had initially thought of this dress four years ago, I had thought of the tulle skirt. And then seeing the sketch, I was not sold on it. And now I had this new vision in my head and I didn't know what to do. So of course I went to my trusty friend Photoshop. So as you can see, I tried first doing a version of the dress with just a yellow skirt, and then I wanted to see how it looked with a blue skirt because I still wasn't sold on the idea of layering the yellow and blue. And then I tried combining both skirt ideas and did an overskirt that had the strips of fabric like I wanted, and I was really liking the way that looked, but I still wasn't sure between the yellow and the blue. So I actually post these on my Instagram and got people to vote on which one they liked better. And the vote was split 50-50. So I went back in and I did do a yellow and blue combined skirt. And I really liked the way this looked. So this is the design I ended up on. So since in-person me talks too much, here's voice over me to say I got this sunflower yellow tool this cobalt blue tool, and that was going to be it for the tool, but then I came across this glitter ivory tool, and I couldn't leave it, so I got that as well. And then for the overskirt, I got this holy blue fabric, which will make sense later. Then the last thing I got at that fabric store was not traditional fabric, but it was the elastic that I ended up using for the waistband of the skirt. So now that I had all my fabric for the tool layer of the skirt, I started making that and the process was super easy. So I started with the piece of elastic I had bought and just measured it and cut it to size. Then I made a makeshift mannequin using my light stand and some Tupperware, and the Tupperware is actually not mine. Sorry, Andrew, I still haven't given that back to you. I ended up actually looking up YouTube tutorials to figure out how to make this skirt, and I will link below the one that was the most helpful. But the process is super easy, and hopefully you can see what I'm doing in the footage, but just to explain, I'm taking the tool, I'm weaving it over the waistband so that half of the length of the tool falls behind the waistband and half of the length of the tool falls in front of the waistband. So basically, for each piece I'm attaching to the waistband, I'm getting a layer behind it and a layer in front of it, which is nice for two reasons, because it means, one, there's less cutting I have to do, and two, it's building up the volume of the skirt twice as fast. So once I put the tool over the waistband and make sure it is the right length, both on the inside of the skirt and the outside of the skirt, I cut it to that length and then I just pinned it in place on the waistband. 
and I went around the entire skirt doing that for the first yellow layer. So once my yellow layer was done and I had the volume and the length I wanted all the way around, I did make it a little bit longer in the back so it had a bit of a train, um, I moved on to the blue layer. So the blue layer was a little bit different. I knew I wanted strategic spots where there would be more blue showing so I wanted to make those spots have more tool and then I just wanted a general blue layer all across it. So for the spots where I specifically wanted moments of intense blue tool, I did pretty much the same process of I figured out what length I wanted, folded the tool in half so it was twice the thickness at that length, but rather than looping it over the waistband and having half in front and half in back, I just pinned it to the front of the waistband in half so I had twice as much volume and blue depth. Then after that, I decided this would be the perfect place to put the sparkly tool so it would be visible and it would kind of dull the blue and yellow so it wasn't so vibrant. So I just did a thin layer of that, just one layer, just pinning around the top and cutting it to length. And then after that layer, I did the final blue layer and then the skirt was almost done. <laughs> so once I had all my layers pinned in place, it was time to sew. And like I said, I do not have a sewing machine, so I just hand stitched it. Probably not the best method, but you work with it, you got. So I ended up doing a zigzag pattern of sewing. That way the elastic band would still have its elasticity and it seemed to work. <laughs> it's still together. Other than that, the only thing I did was I added, again, hand stitched very poorly, this little clippy dude and clippy dude on the other side so I can just clip it together and hold it in place. And that is it for the underskirt. On to the next one. Now for the overskirt, I decided rather than trying to shop for fabric, it would probably be more fun and cheaper to go to ye good old Goodwill and buy dresses and cut those up and use those for the strips of fabric. So I ended up doing that and each dress I think was less than $9 and gave me plenty of fabric to use for this skirt. And I will show you what all those dresses look like in an extremely awkward montage. So I cut my fabric into 1 inch by 12 inch strips, then I laid out the blue hole fabric and I took those strips, folded them in half, fed the loop end of those strips into one of the holes in my fabric, took the tails from that strip and looped it through the loop of that strip and that was it. I then had a tie that was attached to the blue fabric and I just repeated that over and over. So this is the final skirt. After much cutting and knotting, this is what I ended up with. As you can see, the whole fabric is there, but that gets tucked up under the corset so you do not see it. And I just laced a piece of a strip of fabric through it to tie around my waist to hold it in place. And then it gets tucked up under the corset so you don't even see it. And all you see is the many ties that kind of mimic the brush strokes. The only thing that changed in the process is that mustard skirt. I realized was not really fitting with the rest of the dress. All the colors were more vibrant and that just kind of toned it down and it really stood out. So I ended up replacing that mustard skirt with yellow ribbon and I think that color actually ended up working a lot better in the final dress. The last thing that I did is once I figured out what my circumference around my waist was and put all these together, it was holding in place and wasn't allowing the skirt to fully pop out. So I just cut, I don't know if you can tell, 
I just cut strips in the blue fabric so that they kind of came down two points and it allowed it to flare out over the skirt. So to finish the corset, I used black velvet from an old project as a lining so I didn't have paper mache rubbing up against me while I was wearing it. And I just used spray glue to attach it. I started in the middle and worked my way out spraying small sections and laying it down as I went. This helped to eliminate wrinkles and it made it so the fabric didn't stick in places I didn't want it. And any pieces that were extra I just trimmed off so from the outside you cannot see it. So that was the first step in finishing the corset. The second step was doing the grommets, which are pretty straightforward. So for the grommets, I just measured out where I wanted them to go. Then I used my Dremel to drill a hole through the paper mache and velvet lining. Next, I used a blade to clean up the hole, and then I just hammered the grommet in place. And rinse and repeat. So now that I had my grommets all in place, I just had to figure out what I was going to use to actually corset up the back of the dress. And to do that, I decided on going back to those dresses and just using long strips of fabric to tie up the back of the dress. And I decided on a champagne and one of these shimmery blue colors. And with that, the dress was officially done. Now I'll show you what it all looks like together. Except it won't actually be now because I don't have anyone to help me lace it into it. So it will probably be in a while from now, but for you, It'll be in about two seconds. Ready? Go. So that is it. That is the process from beginning to end of how I made my Starry Night ball gown dress. I hope if you have a project you want to tackle but you've been a bit hesitant to, I hope this inspires you to go for it. And if it doesn't work out, you learn something and you can start again. And lastly, if you use any of the techniques that I used in this video for any projects of your own, please tag me in them because I would love to see what you create and I will put my Instagram here and I will also put it down in the description if you want to follow and see what else I do or you want to show me any of the artwork you create. Thank you so much for watching my video and I will see you in the next one. Bye! The only thing I was not super keen on the sketch... I said my thought process for the underskirt but this is what I decided to go with for the yellow under tool and I got, I want to say hold on what I was going to do for the bottom. Stop touching your face. Re-record. There we go. Are you good? Yep. <laughs>